we have looked at, at um, subliminal stuff used artistically to support the message of films. We've looked at it used in advertising with the idea that it's kind of trying to adjust your spending habits or you know, manipulate your actions in some way um, for a commercial gain. Uh, today we're looking at possibly a combination of the two but some other level of something else going on as well. This is a reel-to-reel -reel recorder which I guess people, most people think of the Beatles as being the first band to use it in their recording. This is the kind of um, magnetic tape that was used for location sound recording on film. That's the thing that was loaded into a Nagra before things were digital. And that's why you have a clapperboard to synchronize that with the actual um, film. And this is an example of more like that sort of thing, what you might use in a studio. Right? So it's magnetic tape rec with a recording on one side. So the thing that the Beatles made use of and others who came after them is that if you take that and record on one side, even if it's only four tracks, if you take it off and turn the reel around and feed it back through that recorder, you still have four tracks, but they're running backwards. Track one becomes track four, track four becomes track one, but it plays in reverse. Okay? So people then started experimenting with that. And this is where we get the term back masking from. So our glossary up there, a recording technique in which sound or message is recorded backwards on a track that's meant to be played forwards. So you've got a backwards message embedded within a forward playing track. The other flip side of that is that back masking is a deliberate process. That's what we tend to think of as back masking. But a message found through what we're calling a phonetic reversal um, may actually occur unintentionally. We read an article at one stage about the Matrix being blamed for a series of murders. This is the audio equivalent. People saying that a particular track from Highway to Hell on the ACDC album made him commit murder by listening to that track. Um, the heavy metal band Judas Priest were taken to court in America and sued over a couple of guys who came up with a suicide pact after listening to their music over and over again. So the accusation was that there was something in the, in the song itself embedded that made them do that. Their counter argument, I guess, was that they didn't put it there deliberately. If there's something there, it's accidental. And um, maybe you shouldn't be locking yourself in your room for days on end, hours on end, just listening to heavy metal music over and over anyway. Maybe that's where the problem was. But people still argue about that. But let's, let's see um, some evidence that maybe there's more to it. <clears throat> this guy is an audio engineer. And he says that it's next to impossible to actually create a phonetic reversal. Like I told you, when I tried to do it, it's really, really hard. And it always doesn't sound right. Um, so it would take an awful lot of... Um, smarts to do that. Most of what I'm going to discuss with you today is actually before the era of computing power as we know it. So you don't even have digital help to do it. And remember, you guys can just take something on a program and really easily reverse it. On your editing software for video, just one click, reverse. Or put a negative number in front of the speed and it plays backwards. It's so easy. In those days, it was, took a lot more effort, certainly a lot more planning. But the history of this goes back way before even those early rock bands. This guy, Alistair Crowley, is known, he was known as the Black Magician. So he's into occult themes. He'd written books about it. And yes, that is the way you spell magic, the name of his book. And in 1913, right, like 100 years ago, this guy said, the way to be a good occultist is to train yourself to think backwards. And the way to do that is to play phonograph records in reverse. That's how old this, this is, this playing stuff backwards. He's talking about phonographs, right? The little needle and the horn, you know? So it's been around since then. A hundred years ago, he told people to play records backwards. There are some very strange things going on. 
in certain circumstances and people's motives um, are open to debate but we'll come up with some possible ideas for that but I do want to show you that it's hard to argue that it's not there because there's a whole lot of extraordinary coincidences that would seem impossible to, to disprove if you just went on the pure odds of things happening randomly.